Hey, good morning everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I actually have the rat from my buy here, Casper. Oh, there you go, buddy. And that's right, we're gonna be doing a little bit of feeding today. We've got a bunch of other stuff going on as well, but Casper definitely took a rodent really good, and we have uh, you know, a feast for everyone today. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Let me know in the comments what you're doing today and how you're doing, and in the meantime, let's just have a fun time. And although it's a weekly event to feed these guys, it really never gets old. Look at Pickles here. Come on, bud, right there. Ah, there she is. I mean, how do you ever get sick of feeding such amazingly beautiful animals? I mean, look at Pickles. She is absolutely gorgeous. And you know, that new arboreal enclosure that's gonna be over in the new Reptarium, we're gonna be able to install in two days, I think, because we've got today and tomorrow for the floor getting done, and then that's that, and then we can actually put that in. Of course, I have to find the perfect animals for it. I really want some Amazon Basin Emerald Tree Boas, but I can also put some really cool green tree pythons in there if I so decide. I'm not 100% sure. First thing we're gonna do in a couple days is install that cage. I am so excited to see how it's gonna look. The first cage that's going into the Reptarium, uh, and then we'll decide what we put in there and where we can get it. It's, uh, it's, it's exciting, guys. I mean, it seems like it's taken forever to get to this point, but we are so close to actually the install. Oh, jeez, jeez. He is definitely always fired up. Come on, buddy. There it goes. Perfect hit, too, which is good with this animal because for whatever reason, if he doesn't hit it perfect in the head, uh, it takes him like 40 minutes of just walking around trying to find its head. So uh, that was a perfect hit. Should be uh, a good eat for him. I'll probably feed him two rats today. Just give him a little bit extra. Really excited about the progress with the expansion of the Reptarium. We have, what, 11 days or 10 days or something like that till enclosures show up and the build starts, so it's gonna be really, really cool. Floor is getting finished up, obviously, today and tomorrow, so that's amazing. And then just a bunch of little buttoning up things. And by the way, guys, Friday the 13th, that's right, March, Friday the 13th, looks like it's gonna be our opening day for the new Reptarium. So if you guys decide you wanna come, we're gonna have a huge to-do that whole weekend. As a matter of fact, we may have a party Friday night and Saturday night where we sell tickets so keep your eyes out uh, again be like maybe nine till midnight or something like that after our party to just maybe like you know 30 people or something like that so Friday and Saturday we're thinking about having that after party but please come and visit us Friday the 13th for the grand opening of the new Reptarium Eric, you brought a couple of your ball pythons. Yep, a couple from home. And you're hoping to check follicle growth. Oh my gosh, so excited. Okay, oh, I'm by the way, so. check this out. Yeah. Someone was just asking about this. This was the albino enchi that was found in the woods yep. by your house. That's right. It's gonna be a mom, hopefully. hopefully. Isn't that crazy? So Mary's getting pretty good at ultrasounding. Obviously, yeah. I've had a little experience. So you, you ready for the test? I'm ready to step up to the plate. Right, I always wanted to be a doctor. Did you? But what I ain't a doctor. Uh, <laughs> I can't say. A oh, foot, a foot, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> a orthopedic guy. Okay. I don't know. I, All right. I made so that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you out by putting this on it. And then awesome. you have to try to find. All right. Have you ever done, you know I've you're never doing? done this okay. before. I know there's a foot pedal. Yep. Why don't you Let's get it here? here. Grab this. Let's see what we got. Probably starts up around by the neck. Yeah, that's where, that's where the eggs are out by the neck. Yep, right there. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're looking for, yep, this one's grabbing. You can see there, it right there was there. nothing on it. You didn't <laughs> you even see a it follicle. I know. Couldn't... I don't even. Uh, this is a Whoa, wait a second. What? You found oh, him. Oh, my God. I found him. Is that one right there? That's one right there. Oh, Step on that panel, Mary. Gosh. Step on that panel. Wait. Get it bigger first. Get it bigger. Get it bigger first. Oh, my God. Hold on. What am I doing wrong? Go back. Go back. Go back. There it is. There it is. Step on it. All right. Oh, my God. Now we're going to show the distance here. This girl has big follicles, dude. Dude. That's Look pretty at that. big. that. 21 millimeters. You are, That's you're crazy. like a, you're a natural. Dude. You are like a doctor. I know it. I know it, Dr. Dr. Chambers. Eric. All right, let's see if you have the same luck with the oh second one. Oh my God, that is. This girl crazy. actually looks like she's got some good follicles right now. So yeah, I'm I know. assuming she that she's going to, these will be easy. So smaller follicles are harder to find. So, but this one looks like she has a big follicle. I'd go a little bit further down. Oh, whoops. What do I, okay, there, there we go. We go. Back a little further down. Oh, there, there. Right off the, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my God. Right, what it? is happening? There it is. Holy moly, Dude. guys. You're going to have baby ball pythons. Yeah. You're going to have baby before us. 
23 Holy millimeters. crap, that's good, so right? I don't know what that means, but... It's 20, that means they're well on their way. They'll obviate yes. about 40, 45 millimeters. So, I tell you what, not only is it awesome that uh, he's getting snakes, but uh, he's pretty good at ultrasounding. So, let's Holy let's crap. try let's try one last one. Learn from and the past. So, now we're going to see. Oh, oh, oh what is that? that? Go down, down, down. Is that down, down. Nope, you, you had him. Oh, back up, back up. Oh, oh, back up. All right, that's the that's the the gallbladder. So keep going down towards you, down towards you. Towards me. This is yep, harder than it right looks. There. They're, they're right there. See them? Oh, little teeny weeny things, huh? Yep. So these look like they're probably only maybe six, five, oh, six, something man. like that. Yep, seven millimeters. So. Seven millimeters. All right. Well, hey, you're well on your way. So uh, let me know in the comments how you feel. Eric did. Mary, you taught him well, I think. So learn uh, from the best, you guys. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good luck. <laughs> Next up is the Tiger Amazon Lucky, of course. Come on, buddy. It's so weird how these Amazon tree bows. I've talked about it in the past. How they they don't really spend much time up in the trees. Most of their time they spend actually down on the ground, just like Lucky is right here. And it's just kind of weird. I'm not sure why that is. I mean, we've given them all kinds of trees and branches and, and foliage and all that type of stuff. Come on, bud. There you go, buddy. And still, not just Lucky, but every Amazon tree bow we've ever had spends the majority of their time on the ground. Uh, I don't know what that's all about. I mean, they are a tree bow, and it's really cool when they're up in the trees, but for some reason, they spend a lot of time on the ground. Pretty, are you ready to eat, girl? She was adventurous with me last time I had her out but she got out of her tub a couple times in the school presentation, so uh, uh, she's definitely been on the go. Give her a couple rats and she should be good to go. Laura and I were just talking about how you wonder where she's gonna end up, you know? Laura was like, maybe one day she'll look like Night Fury, be just solid black. I think she'll definitely slow down the kind of increased pigment as she gets older, but uh, it will be interesting to see what she looks like a year or two from now. It's super rare for Maisie to be out of its little cubby hole over there, so uh, he must be really, Excited about food today. You ready, bud? There you go. There it is. Good job, buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. Maze is great. You know, great ambassador of corn snakes. You know, I had someone come in the other night and they wanted to get a corn snake as their first pet. And it's kind of cool that you can kind of, you know, kick your tires with Maisie, you know what I mean? So they were able to hold it and just get an idea if that was the animal they wanted as a pet. It turns out they loved it and it was really great. So uh, Maze is a good ambassador. Can't wait to get Jeffrey in a nice, larger exhibit just to kind of show him off a little bit. We can work with him a little bit more. There you go, buddy. There you go. There it is. Because again, as he's getting bigger, it's just getting more and more impressive. And I want to start taking him out a lot more like we do Sunrise because he's kind of that, you know, bigger snake, but not too big, you know, kind of bridging the gap between the little tiny snakes and the bigger snakes. So he'll go into a nice four foot, probably by six foot cage in the new Reptarium or here. I'm not exactly sure yet why, but uh, nevertheless, it won't be long before he's probably 10 foot long. Come on, Peppa. You ready for some food? Come on, silly. There you go. Oh, you're so gentle. <laughs> Hognose snakes are so wild. I love the fact that they're such gentle little creatures for sure. Looks like she's just starting to go a little bit opaque to go into shed, but just enough to have one last meal before that shed. I tell you what guys, I have been loving the podcast life. I mean, I've been saying this, I want this to be a big part of my future. Not only hanging out with the family and hanging out with you guys, but also having really cool guests on. So I've been working on a bunch of other stuff. So make sure to go over Checking In podcast channel. Link in the description. I'll pin a comment. Go show that some love. Check out our old podcast. Every Wednesday and Thursday we'll be having new podcasts and every now and then during the week as well. So definitely check it out. Show it some love. I tell you what, I love podcasting. I hope I'm going to be doing this for a long time. Finally, the floor is all sanded. Yeah, it looks great, man. It looks really good, dude. So we have all the rooms done. Everything is good to go. So uh, now the fun part, we actually start to lay down the prime coat, which is when it really starts to look like what it's gonna look like when it's done. So we do the prime coat today, tomorrow the finish coat, a little bit of grit on it, and it is ready to roll.
when their first epoxy is done. You can see it's in this room too, and basically what they do is they just take this and they'll start spreading it out as a thin layer on the floor, but you start to get the idea of the actual color of the floor right here, so uh, it's gonna look good. You know, Again, we won't be able to walk on this later on today because it'll be wet, obviously, but tomorrow we'll probably be able to walk on it in the morning, and then uh, to the next day, completely done, we can walk on it all we want, ready for cages to come in. Tiger Lily, the Brazilian rainbow boa, is really beautiful. She's probably a year away from breeding, so next year we may actually take her and breed her. Believe it or not, she's a het for hypo, which of course we have a hypo male, which is a recessive mutation, so uh, it'd be really cool to do that. And these are outbred. The original hypo stuff, honestly, was a little bit weak. I mean, it just uh, didn't thrive as well in captivity, so you have to do smaller meals, uh, sometimes a lot of fertility issues. So uh, this is an outbred new gene pool animal, so hopefully with any luck, she'll be up to size next year and maybe we can produce some really strong hypo Brazilian rainbows. And just like the other animals, Sunrise has been eating larger meals, like maybe three to five pound rabbits, but I'm gonna give her a little break from that this week and just give her a couple rats. Looks like she is ready to go for sure. Kind of grabbed it in a wonky way, so it might take her a minute to get started here. But again, I think that this break from like bigger meals every now and then is kind of a good thing, right? Because it just gives them an opportunity to clear their system out, digest smaller meals that take only a day or two, as opposed to something bigger that's gonna take, you know, four or five, six days. Or hey, in Ivy's case, it took her like 10 or 12 days last time. Just how I like to vary things up with lizards and tortoises, I do the same thing with my snakes. So Casper here is, whoa, come on Casper. It's okay, buddy. Whoa! There you go, baby. There you go. Oh, there you go. You crazy monkey, just crazy, just crazy. But again, I like to vary up the same thing where sometimes I'll give large meals and sometimes I'll give a handful of smaller meals. So obviously Casper's been eating kind of three to four pound pigs. Now I'm gonna feed him three or four rats. Uh, just kind of vary that up. Cause again, in the wild you figure, it's gonna be different for them every time. And that's even a little bit of mental enrichment, right? Because uh, they're feeding on smaller meals, which is different, which makes them think like, why is it smaller this time and bigger last time? Every little bit just makes your animal a little bit more mentally healthy. Come on, Mr. Nubbins. You ready for some food? Come on, buddy. Let's go. Ah, there it is. And you know, the fact is, is that these are obviously a uh, Caribbean type of a boa. You know, you can find this exact striatus in uh, Jamaica, Haiti, all over the place. And, and although they're a relatively small boa with live bearing babies, uh, they have really large teeth. I've been bit by not Mr. Nubbins, but a few of the Haitian boas. And uh, I tell you what, you know, they're grabbing bats out of the air. So they have to have big teeth in order to really grab so they can't get away. So uh, although it may look uh, pretty benign, to be honest with you, those little front teeth right there are something you do not want to get bit by. Next up is honey. Beautiful pastel pie ball, ball python. You ready for an eat? Whoa, geesh, you missed girl. Okay, there it is. There it goes, sweetheart. Sometimes snakes just are weird like that. You know, they just get so excited about eating that they, they miss it all the time. That's how I get bit a lot, to be totally honest with you. A lot of times I've been using these. I used to never use forceps or tongs uh, and I get bit all the time with stuff like that. So I guess as I'm getting older, I'm getting smarter. See it coming together now. I mean, it looks amazing, right? You know, that kind of richness, the color, the gloss on it looks really amazing. It's quick work once they get started for sure. So uh, it's only been like 10, 15 minutes and they've got all this done. The rooms are done over here, which are pretty awesome. And then of course they just gotta finish this last part out. So uh, here in another 15, 20 minutes, uh, I won't be able to come back into the new Reptarium expansion until tomorrow. 
Thank you so much for watching today's vlog. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, can you do me a few favors? Over here, you can subscribe to my podcast channel, Checking In. I hope that you'll enjoy that content. Over here, you can roll through an entire playlist of stuff if you so choose. You can subscribe to the vlog channel right here. Turn the post notifications on for me. Have a wonderful day, and you better be kind to someone. I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.